Okay, so what I'd like to do is talk about um, the OI approach uh, to a cloud. I think you'll uh, hear a lot of similar um, themes through this. So a little bit about ourselves. Um, OOI has uh, five uh, implementations, installations uh, in the Northern Hemisphere and uh, two retired in the Southern Hemisphere, which we still uh, hold data for. We receive uh, constant input from these instruments, uh, 800 plus coming into our system. I think what's important here is uh, to understand that we have a 25 year lifetime. So we are constantly uh, taking in data and building a, a queue of data um, as well as any relationship we get into would be a long-term uh, relationship. The data is freely available online. So uh, like probably many people uh, at this conference, uh, we don't have a revenue stream. Therefore, any discussion of ROI is uh, challenging. OI by the number. So here's what I think is pertinent for our, our conversation. So data collected, we have two databases in, in the back end, a Cassandra and a Postgres. The Cassandra database is 25 terabytes uh, right now, and that's about six years uh, worth of data, and, and our Postgres is, is modest. Keep that 25 terabytes in mind as we're going to come back to that uh, a little bit later. We have 112 billion rows of numerical data, and uh, we get new data ingress um, every second. Uh, of every day, of every week, of every month, of, of every year. So, so that's also a uh, key to a cloud implementation. Uh, we also have a lot of raw data um, and uh, the growth rate of doubling every three years is, is optimistic. You know, with uh, high, high def uh, video being replaced with 4K and some of our sampling rates going up, uh, I suspect we're gonna double uh, uh, quicker. Uh, a lot of our raw data is in, in high def video uh, digital pictures, bioacoustic sonar, and, and hydrophone. And uh, we see that as one of the challenges for us uh, in, in a cloud strategy. Uh, we deliver this data to, to users. Um, we get 25 million data requests per month. Um, 5.6 million of those are 1,000 rows or greater. Why is that important? Um, we see that those are more about moving data than uh, processing, uh, whereas the smaller requests are more about processing than moving data. Um, we also have external systems interrogating. We have bots that uh, interrogate our system every second to about every 30 seconds. So we have a, a, a constant ingress of data, which is pretty predictable, and a constant egress of data, which is not as predictable. So initially you have to ask yourself uh, uh, some questions such as why should we consider using uh, cloud-based processing and or uh, data access. And you can't read a white paper, uh, go to a conference um, or, or have discussions with your colleagues that, that, that don't talk about the cloud. It's, it's out there. There's a lot of anecdotal information about it, some good, some bad. Um, and I, I really believe that uh, it's incumbent upon CI management to look into that. It's a, it's a popular method uh, across CI infrastructures and, and there are enough success out there and, and we need to look at it. So the first question we ask ourselves is, can OOI migrate all processing to the cloud effectively? And our current research has shown that our infrastructure architecture, our data process flow, our use patterns, um, our barriers, uh, some uh, with regard to technology and, and, and preparing for the cloud, but the other is, is cost. And I, and I hear others are having success with that, but, but right now, uh, our uh, data egress um, and the unpredictability of it is, is one of our challenges there. So given the light of that answer, um, the next logical question is, can OOI prepare or better position ourselves for migration to the cloud? And the answer there is absolutely um, yes. I think one is a possible hybrid solution early on where the, the more costly data egresses uh, are kept uh, local. Um, we have also moved, well, we've we're in the process of moving from uh, a compute on demand model to a, a pre, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a pre-compute model. Um, we also recently migrated our data centers, and in doing that, we uh, upgraded our data software. And that 25 terabyte that I talked about earlier for our database was 100 terabyte prior. Um, more aggressive data management plan and an upgrade in software helped reduce that, and that, that's a major step for us. And so we know we can reduce that. 
um, even further. So then the next logical question, of course, is how can OI best utilize the cloud now uh, in a cost-effective manner, um, or, or can we? So our strategy moving forward, we, we feel we can best leverage the cloud by um, leveling the playing field for our users. Um, and I want to remind folks, I'm talking about this really about users. We do use um, the cloud in other areas, uh, particularly for, for uh, disaster recovery. But um, if we put a compute in place model out there, we eliminate the need to download data in order to interact with it. And that removes the barrier of little or no access to high speed internet. Now, many of our data sets are not that hard to download. Some are sizable and, and that will help here, but, but some of them are not. This also has the advantage of not having to get out of your thought process. If you're using so, uh, a compute uh, in place model, you can just add another file versus exit out of that, download, prepare the data, and, and then bring it into whatever environment you're using. It also moves processing from the local uh, uh, laptop, uh, desktop uh, to the cloud as well. And that removes the barrier of older technology. And um, even we as, as developers on the program, we can run out of memory on our laptops uh, managing some of this data. Even the smaller data sets, depending on what kind of computation you're doing, you can run out of memory. Um, but again, the costs are still uh, unpredictable here and potentially high. So I'm a big fan of proof of concepts. I like to run them all the time. Um, we we're, are going to take that approach here with how we want to utilize the cloud by using a, uh, a, a, a bunch of proofs of concepts that either uh, prove out our thoughts or uh, uh, eliminate them. Um, we want to build a local environment that emulates the cloud infrastructure without the budgetary and predict unpredictability um, as well as helping us change our architecture um, so that it's workable in the cloud. And this way we can do this in a cost-effective uh, manner. We are looking to implement a cloud-friendly architecture such as Jupyter Hub or Pangeo. Um, we've already started uh, this, make a subset of OOI data available in cloud-friendly formats such as NetCDF or ZAR. And NetCDF is our, our native storage uh, anyway. Um, and then organize this data in a searchable format such as stack. And of course, that's one of the first pillars of FAIR uh, to make your data findable. Um, we've also implemented software, uh, Dell Live Optics, that measure our on-prem system to give us an analysis of what would it cost to migrate to the cloud. And uh, we're, we're relatively early on in this process, but the first results uh, prove out that uh, a migration for us wholesale to the cloud would be more expensive than um, replacing our equipment uh, on an every five year uh, schedule. However, it's not crazily more expensive. So it's uh, the gap is closing. I think it's something that we need to watch um, uh, over the years. So what we did was we uh, implemented a PLC, which was a Jupyter notebook on a local cloud server. Uh, we've attached it to our local pre-computer files and we've used Stack. Uh, to organize the data uh, and for discoverability. And it's been very successful. So we'll be moving to implementing Jupyter Hub. So, and that way we get more of a community and uh, the security that Jupyter Hub brings with it. We'll do that locally as well and uh, make it available for a, a small uh, use case. And then the next logical step would be implementing that architecture um, out on the cloud and learning from it and, and learning what we might need to change in the, our back ends to, to make that move to the cloud um, in a staged environment. And that's what I have, thank you. Thank you, Jay.